right, guys. Well, I'm back today with something I've wanted to do and add to the collection for a very long time, a submachine gun. This is actually the Cobra M11, and this thing is awesome. Now, you may be saying, how is this possible to acquire? And your average citizen, as long as they're in good standing with the law, can acquire something like this, and it transfers on a Form 4. A little bit about the backstory. Up until 1986, with the passing of the Hughes Amendment, you could merely acquire a full auto like any other type of Class 3 weapon as long as you paid the $200 tax stamp and you purchased it on a Form 4 or you made it on a Form 1. Now, after the Hughes Amendment passed, everything that was already created was grandfathered in. And that means there is a very limited supply of legally attainable full autos for your average citizen. We're not going to talk about your SOT or different permits you can get to manufacture these for special purposes like for law enforcement use or testing out a product. This is something that your average citizen can own by merely registering it and transferring it on a Form 4. I purchased this from a legal owner. We did all the ATF paperwork. I paid him directly and we transferred it when my tax stamp cleared. Now, this may seem like a daunting process to some, but if you ever try to suppress or a short-barreled rifle, it's the exact same thing. A little more expensive, not for the tax stamp, but for the item itself, again, because there is a limited supply. I'm not really going to discuss price, but guys, these are incredibly pricey for what it is, and you are paying for the fact that this was made before 1986, and it's fully transferable. Now, you can look up prices on a wide variety of websites for things like this, but I feel like the Cobra M11 is one of the most versatile you can get for a reasonable price right now on the market. We're going to talk about how it functions in its current configuration and all the possibilities to update this and bring it into the more modern era and make it a usable submachine gun for today's purposes. Now, for me, I bought this as a collectible firearm uh, just to enjoy at the range. Something like this is a pretty interesting piece, and I'm really glad that I've got one out for the YouTube channel to make some videos with. So let's dig into the specs and features again of the configuration it's in now and its potential for the future. Now this gun is a Cobra M11, but it's based heavily almost an exact replica of the Mac 11, developed by the Military Armament Corporation in Gordon Ingram in the 1970s. This, in fact, came after the MAC-10, the first gun they developed for the purpose of Special Operations Forces having something with incredible firepower that was also quiet. This had a suppressor with the proprietary threads on here that allowed it to be a very small and compact package to dump a ton of firepower, but incredibly quiet since the 45 ACP was subsonic. When they moved to the 9mm, they actually developed some of the first 9mm subsonic loads and then paired it with the suppressor, again, to have that same capability of dumping a lot of firepower, but very quietly. And then the 9mm guns were a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller, and a little bit more maneuverable because they didn't weigh as much. This is entirely made out of sheet metal and has a folding wireframe stock that slides into the receiver itself. We'll talk a little bit about that. This was really one of the first submachine guns with a threaded, de threaded barrel developed again in conjunction with suppressor use. This is an awesome firearm, especially a very innovative firearm for its day. And I still feel like it's got some viability now, especially with the improvements uh, that Lage Manufacturing has come up with for the Cobra M11 or just Mac 11s in general. So before we get too far into all of the upgrades you could potentially do, I want to give you guys a rundown of the operations of the Cobra M11. Now this fires from an open bolt, meaning when it is closed, it cannot fire. What you'll do is you'll cock it back. It locks into place. Now make sure it's clear one more time. When you pull the trigger, this actually picks up the round hits home, slam fires, and then it pulls back again. So when it's in full auto mode, you just simply pull the trigger and it will cycle through dumping the magazine until you let go of the trigger. On the opposite side, you have full auto and semi-auto. Those are the only two settings. And then you have the safety located under the trigger guard. It's a very blocky design, and these proprietary threads are really difficult to find on suppressors nowadays, but the upper itself is incredibly modular and is simply removed with one pin located right here. You remove this pin and the entire upper comes off and you can drop on any upper you want. In fact, this is actually a 380 ACP upper assembly that you saw in the intro. The 9mm upper I got with this machine gun had a buffer in the back that was completely just uh, weathered, worn. This was stored in a closet for years and years. 
And so that buffer degraded, I've got some more on order. To deploy this wireframe stock, you simply fold down, it locks into place, and you'll pull it out and it deploys. It's actually reasonably comfortable and reasonably stable. You have a lot of wobble in it, but once you mount it up to your shoulder, you're good to go. You depress the button and then the stock collapses back itself. You'll pinch this here and it will fold over this rear sight. Now the rear sight on this guy is horrid and the front sight is mediocre. A little bit hard to interface with when it comes to the sight placement, the stock, and the overall usability of this firearm. And the other biggest problem with the M11s or Mac 11s is the rate of fire. 1,500 rounds a minute. That is flying. And for the untrained gun guy, that will just tear up uh, anything you're shooting at. It's going to fly up. It's going to pull up. It's going to nose up. And it's very difficult to control. So understanding what you're getting into before you pull the trigger is pretty key. Now, in the 380 configuration, as you see here, it's actually a little bit more manageable, as you can see in the intro. It doesn't pull up as much and the rate of fire is a little bit slower. Now I want to talk about Lage Manufacturing. These guys have a, a pretty awesome setup with a side charging Picatinny rail and forward grip with half by 28 thread upper that you simply pop this pin out, drop it on, and it's a drop-in replacement. They've got a wide variety of folding stocks made out of aluminum, very modular, modern, and solid. Hopefully some of this stuff will be on order soon and we'll try it out on the channel. We'll talk more about it then. They also can slow the rate of fire down up to 550 rounds a second, 600, 700. You can fine tune it with their tungsten bolts and spring pressures. So the fact that you can add optics, add a better stock, all of this makes this one of the coolest, I think, submachine guns that you can still get right now uh, that's still really usable in today's modern times. You can have very nice stocks, optics, and put your modern suppressors on it. So that's why I think this is cool. And then swap this pin out and drop it back on. The other cool thing about these M11s is the parts are everywhere. When you buy something like this, you want to talk about serviceability long term because you really bought this as an investment. Something like this is going to go up in value, but as long as it's running. And so if something breaks, how easy it to fix? And the M11s are incredibly simple to fix. In fact, you can just swap out an entire upper for like out of three, four hundred dollars and you're back in business. So that's really cool with something like these guys. So I hope this gives you a high value option to look into. If you ever thought about getting into the submachine gun game, this is a pretty slick option. And stay tuned to see when we start upgrading and updating this particular Cobra M11. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.